What's up, what's up everybody? I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another edition of the Garage Learning From Home. Today, we're gonna to share with you a new video about how you could use Arduino in the videos that you make. So as a prerequisite for this video, you should definitely go online to the channel and watch the intro to LED lights video we put up a little while back. There's a whole lot you could do with an Arduino and it's pretty amazing because it's really cheap and really fun to use. My first burger drop video that went viral was all run off of an Arduino minus the camera robot. And that was pretty awesome. So today we're just gonna start with the very basics and over the next coming weeks and when the garage learning launches for real, we're gonna really break this down into chapters and really go into the fine detail of every little piece and everything that this thing can do. So take it away Riley and thanks so much. See you next time. Hi, I'm Riley with The Garage Learning, and today we're going to talk about Arduino. So what is Arduino? Arduino is an open source electronics platform based on easy to use software and hardware. Arduino boards, like this one here, are basically just super capable mini computers with inputs and outputs that you can use for all sorts of things. Arduinos come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, with different capabilities and form factors available for whatever your project needs. Today we're going to be using the Arduino Uno board, which we use for a lot of our projects. Um, in fact, it's the most common Arduino board out there. So before we get into all the details and all the cool capabilities of these boards, it's important to understand their basic functions, um, inputs, and outputs. Arduinos can read inputs, like sensors or signals or pushing a button, and they can also send outputs, uh, like controlling a motor or turning on an LED or really whatever you need. When it comes to inputs and outputs, the Arduino has two main types of pins or ports that you can interface with. Arduinos have digital ports, which can read inputs or send outputs, as well as analog pins, which can only receive inputs. So let's talk about this Arduino Uno for a minute. There's a port here for power. Um, five volts is what Arduinos run on. There's a port here for USB programming. Um, and then there are all of our inputs and output pins that we talked about. They're labeled. On this side, we have the digital ports and a few other ports we'll talk about later. And on this side, we have the analog ports and also a few other ports we'll talk about later. <laughs> so this model, uh, the Arduino Uno, has 14 digital input or output pins and six analog input pins. So programming this Arduino is done with computer in the Arduino programming language and Arduino IDE. You write the code on your computer and then you upload it to the Arduino, which runs the code as soon as you upload it or as soon as you power it on. So we could talk about theory behind Arduino for days, um, months, honestly, but but my favorite way to get practical knowledge is by doing. So we're gonna start off with a simple project here. Um, I'm gonna use this little push button here um, to cycle between turning on two lights. So let's start off with wiring. You're gonna need the Arduino Uno, a breadboard, some LEDs, a button, some ribbon wire, and a resistor kit. So basically when I push this button, it creates a connection between this terminal and this terminal. Um, so I'm gonna use that function to send five volts to one of the Arduino's analog inputs. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is connect this button here to the Arduino, and in order to do that, I need to solder some ribbon cable to it. Maybe not the world's prettiest soldering job, but it'll work. So now that I have the ribbon cable soldered to the button, I'm gonna go ahead and plug one end of the button into the port A0 or analog zero. And I'm gonna plug the other one into the one labeled five volts. Um, now when I press the button, five volts will be sent from the five volts port here through the button to A0. Cool, so now I'm gonna connect the LEDs and that's where I'm gonna be using this breadboard. So these LEDs are pretty chopped up and used. Um, normally they come with much longer leads on them. Um, the longer lead is the positive and the shorter one is the negative. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug these into the breadboard like this. So now I have these LEDs next to each other on the breadboard. Um, positive is on the right side and negative is on the left side of both the green and the yellow LED. 
And the first thing I'm gonna do is connect negative to negative um, on both LEDs. So I have negative on the left side. I'm gonna plug into the same row that the negative is in. And then I'm gonna do the same on the yellow LED. Now that that's connected, I'm gonna take another jumper wire. I'm gonna plug into either of those two rows to connect to the negatives from both LEDs. And now I'm gonna plug that into one of the ground ports on the Arduino. Cool, so now both LEDs are grounded to the Arduino. Um, now the way we're gonna be turning these on is using our digital outputs. So the next thing I'm gonna do is connect the LED's positive terminal to outputs digital one and digital two. But I'm not gonna connect them directly. Um, I need both of these outputs to go through a resistor first because these LEDs actually run on 3.3 volts, not the five volts that the Arduino will be outputting. So here I've got a pack of 330 ohm resistors and I'm gonna go ahead and plug them into the other side of the LED on the breadboard. So I've got two resistors and I'm gonna go ahead and plug them both into the positive terminals on both LEDs. So one there and one here. Now I'm gonna loop them over to the other side of the breadboard and I'm gonna put them down. It doesn't really matter where I'm gonna place them as long as there's one free port because we're gonna take ribbon wire and connect from here to the Arduino. So I'm gonna take two more lengths of ribbon wire and I'm gonna go ahead and plug in in parallel right next to the resistor. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plug these outputs into uh, digital ports two and three. Cool, so now whenever the Arduino sends an output to either digital two or digital three, power will be able to flow from the output um, through the LED, through the resistor, and to ground. So let's just go over what's going on here. So this button, when pressed, connects the five volt port to the analog input zero port on the Arduino. We'll use that as our trigger to switch which output is on. Outputs two and three are connected to 330 ohm resistors that connect to LEDs and then back to ground. So depending on which output is on, one of these LEDs will get 3.3 volts and turn on. Now all that's left is programming the Arduino so that it knows to switch between outputs when you press the button. So let's go ahead and let's put the circuit off to the side for a second and let's work on some code. So I went ahead and I grabbed my computer. I've got the breadboard and Arduino here. Um, I've got a five volt power source with a barrel connector on it to power the Arduino. And I have a adapter for my computer and the USB cable to plug into the Arduino. So the first thing I'm gonna do is plug the Arduino into the five volt power source to make sure it turns on. And yep, I get a green LED on the board, so that's good. So I'm gonna unplug that, and then I'm gonna plug the USB into the board, and then that into my computer. Cool, so it also turns on when I plug it into the computer, so that's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and start writing the code. I'm going to open up the Arduino IDE which you can download from the link in the description. There we go, it's opened up a sketch I've already written for this project. I'm gonna put that over here on the side. You can read through it if you want to. Um, we're gonna open up a new sketch, put that on the side here, and start off rewriting this code and explaining step-by-step step what I'm doing here. So before we start off coding, I wanna say that I am not an expert coder by any means. Um, I know enough to get by, I'm gonna teach you what I know in this tutorial, but there are definitely much better resources out there to learn Arduino code from, and I'll link those in the description. So basically, when you open up a new sketch, you're gonna be presented with this. Um, it says void setup, put your setup code here inside of those brackets, and then void loop, put your main code here inside of these brackets. Um, so basically, these two voids are places where you can put code to be run either once in the setup void or infinitely in the loop void. Um, we're going to use both of these in this project. But even before those voids, I'm going to hit enter a few times and I'm going to define some variables. So this uh, constant int is a type of variable. Um, I'm going to call this button pin and it's going to be pin A0, analog zero. Um, so if you didn't gather, basically what I'm doing here is I'm defining the pin that the button is plugged into. So now the Arduino knows what the button is plugged into. So now I'm going to go ahead and define two more pins, um, the pins that I have the LED plugged into. I'm going to call one of them odd LED, 
and that's gonna be pin two, digital two, and I'm gonna call one of them even LED. And that's gonna be digital pin three. Cool. Now I'm gonna define one more variable. I'm gonna call it press count. And that is just going to be set to zero. Um, it's not a pin or anything, it's just a variable. So it's gonna start off at zero, and then when I write the code, basically the idea is every time I press the button, the counter goes up. Then based on what the counter's at, the LEDs can switch back and forth. So I'm gonna go into the setup void here, delete that comment, and I'm going to start off with defining the pin modes for the LEDs. So what I've gone and done here is defined odd LED and even LED, um, the pins that they're connected to as output pins. So now the Arduino knows that they can send voltage to those pins to turn on the LEDs. Um, that's all I'm going to put in the setup void. So now I'm going to go into the loop void, uh, delete the comment there, and I'm going to start off with an if statement. Um, so an if statement is basically like you say if condition A is met, then do something. If condition B is met, then do something else. Um, I'm going to say if analog read of button pin is greater than 1000, then do what's inside of these brackets. So what this means is it's reading the voltage of the button pin, which is analog pin zero. Um, if it's above 1000, that means the voltage is around five volts. That means the button is pressed, because otherwise there's no voltage getting to the button pin. There's no continuity there. So basically, when you press the button, it does what's inside of these brackets. So I'm gonna start off inside of these brackets by upping the press count. So every time I press the button, it should add one to the press count variable. So it keeps track of how many presses I have. So press count equals press count plus one. That's it. Cool. Now inside of that, I'm going to add one more if statement. So if, parentheses, that's the condition that'll go in there, and then brackets. That is the code it'll run. So in here, that is where the condition goes. So if whatever you write in here happens, then it does what's ever written here. So basically what I'm gonna do with this if statement is check if the press count is even or odd. Um, if it's even, I'm gonna have it turn on one LED, and if it's odd, I'm gonna have it turn on the other LED. So basically what this if statement does is checks if it's odd or even. So there's gonna be an if and then if it's odd and then else for if it's even. So basically we're gonna add the same code into both of these sets of brackets. The only difference is gonna be one of them turns one LED on and one of them turns the other LED on. So the way we're gonna turn an LED on is using digital write. So digital write odd LED high. This means it will digital write on pin odd LED high. So basically it'll send five volts to the pin that the odd LED is plugged into, which if we go back here, we can see that's pin two. Cool. Now, in case the um, other LED was on for any reason, because this code is looping and it's gonna get to this point many times, I'm going to have it shut even LED off as well. Cool. So now I'm gonna add a little delay so that it doesn't count your button press multiple times. I'm gonna make that delay one second or 1000 milliseconds. Cool, so I'm gonna copy that. Not like that, I'm gonna copy that. Paste it here, make my formatting a little nicer. And now I'm basically gonna change high to low and low to high. So that in one scenario, it turns one LED on and the other off, and in the other scenario, it turns the opposite LED on and the other one off. That's essentially all I should have to write. I'm gonna go ahead and verify the code, save it first, and I'm getting an error. Let's see what I did wrong. That button pin has a capital. In the declaration of the variable, I used all lowercase, so here I should do the same too. Let's verify it again. Get one more issue. 
Oh, I just used an extra parentheses. Compiled. Cool. So this is what the code will look like. It'll be available for download if you don't want to write through this yourself. Um, I'm going to save this version for download because it has a little bit of explanation in comments as to what I'm doing in each line of code. Um, so I'm going to go verify this and upload it to the Arduino. Oops, problem uploading the board. Before you upload, you need to go to tools, um, to the port and choose the port that the Arduino is plugged into. And then you also need to choose which board you're plugged into. I'm using a genuine Arduino Uno, so I'm gonna plug into that. So I went back and looked at my code. Um, I had a parentheses here after the if statement that I didn't need. Um, and then this press count thing, upping the press count should go here. So let's verify that and upload that, and one of the LEDs should turn on. Cool, so I unplugged the button while I was troubleshooting. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it back in to five volts and A0, and you'll notice that when I press the button, the LED changes. You'll also notice that whenever I hold the button, or whenever I touch the two contacts with my finger, see if I can get it to happen. Oh, I'm not getting it to happen. Basically what's going on here is there is noise. Um, so when I press the button, it gets the signal, but when I touch the two prongs, um, the Arduino also reads that as five volts for some reason. Um, the reason that's happening is because there's nothing here to pull down the voltage from the button to basically eliminate noise. So what you can do basically to fix this is take the ribbon cable that was plugged into A0 and run that over to the breadboard. Now, over here on the breadboard, we already have a rail that is ground. Um, this wire here, this wire here, all of that goes to ground. So I'm gonna take a resistor and plug that in to one of the grounds in parallel, and I'm gonna run that over here. So I'm gonna plug the ribbon cable that was formerly plugged into A0 into a resistor to ground. So now that I have this resistor grounding the button, um, it should eliminate all the noise in the circuit. And when I press this button down, it'll switch. It's a little bit of a sticky button. Um, yeah, this button is old and used and it's breaking, but you, you get the idea. So at all times, this button is grounded. And when I press it, the current flows from V in through the button, through this wire all the way here to analog zero, which gets the signal and switches the code to switch which button is on. So now that this is working, I'm gonna do a quick recap on what's going on here. So these LEDs are plugged into pins two and three on the Arduino. When the Arduino sends five volts to pins two or three, it goes through these cables, through these resistors, which drops the voltage for the LEDs, through the LEDs, turning them on and back to ground. Now, in order to get the Arduino to send voltage, I have this button that I'm using as a trigger. One end of the button is connected to V in, which is five volts, and one end of the button is connected to analog zero and ground. It's connected to ground to reduce noise so that the Arduino doesn't get faulty readings. So basically, when I push the button, voltage is able to flow through the button to analog zero and the Arduino gets its signal. Now, on the code end of things, the first thing I do is define all of the variables and pins that I'm using. I have a press counter variable, which counts how many times I press the button. I have the two LED pins, pins two and three, and then I have the button pin. In my setup void, the code that's run once, I define the pin modes of the LEDs so that the Arduino knows how to use them. And then in my loop code is kind of where the magic happens. So this first line here checks every time the button is pressed, and if it's pressed, it tallies it to the press count and adds one of that variable so it keeps a count. Then after it's pressed, it does one more if statement, it checks if the number of presses is odd or even, and depending on that output, it turns one of the LEDs on and one of them off, or the other off and the other on. Now in the if or the else part of that statement, it also has a delay so that it waits about a second in between button presses so it doesn't just keep counting as long as you hold the button down. Cool, um, so I'm pretty happy with that as I start for a first Arduino tutorial. Please let me know what you guys are interested in learning next. Um, I know this is just basics and theory, but you do need to know it in order to do stuff like controlling motors or triggering solenoids and relays and transistors and all that fun stuff. So with that said, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. I hope you got something out of it and I'll see you in the next one.